Welcome to this week's edition of Think on Your Faith. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Greetings, my free thinking brothers and sisters. Hope you've had a fantastic week. Hope you found some good in the world, and I hope you've taken some steps to get yourself one step closer to shaking your servile prejudices and begin seeing the world for what it actually is. I am Selu Alofipo, your always intrepid host, and I welcome you as we get ready to raise your consciousness. All right, friends, welcome back to another week of Think on Your Faith. We sure appreciate the time you've taken to spend with us, as always. Um, we know that you've got options, and so we appreciate you choosing us to be uh, to be a part of your day. Um, as as we get going, um, I do want to remind all of you out there, if you haven't subscribed yet, to please subscribe to our podcast so that way you guys can get automatic notifications of the new releases. And also, um, if you haven't had a chance to leave us a review, um, if you could uh, leave us a, a five star review, five stars is the appropriate number. And um, that, that's a good way of showing us that uh, you, you support us and that you want to continue hearing future um, episodes. So with that, we'll get we'll get going. I am uh, pleased to be joined by Master McCoy, uh, Wade McCoy. I call him, I affectionately call him Coach McCoy because he is my coach. Now, now, he doesn't know this, but he's actually my life coach. And so is uh, his, his uh, beautiful wife, Susie. They run a very successful, um, should we call it a dojo or is it a martial arts studio? What do you call it? Uh, I normally call it a martial arts school. Um, okay. Any of those words work, uh, dojo. Uh, the Korean term is dojang. Okay. Um, Okay. So I, I don't, you know, some people call it gym. I, I don't care. I'm yeah. Like yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you guys run a, you guys run a fabulous outfit. Um, I am always impressed uh, with uh, the time that you spend in there. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is basically your life. How did you discover it? I mean, when, at what point did martial arts become a part of your life? So I discovered it when I was a kid, you know, just like a, a lot of people growing up, um, you know, in the eighties, uh, the martial art movie scene was popular, you know, with John claude Van Damme and Steven yeah. Seagal and Chuck Norris at the tail of his career. And um, so I, I guess I was watching it on TV and told my mom I wanted to do it. And uh, she brought me into, you know, a school and uh, I started there and I've kind of been in the in and out of it as a kid. And then, mm-hmm. and then when I got a little bit older, um, really went back to it kind of to ground me. Yeah. So was it, how, how old were you as a kid when you first got into it, when your mom took you? I would say seven. Seven. Like when did you actually pursue the art form and become a master at it? Probably a couple of years after I opened my school. Um, you know, I just, uh, when, when did you open your school? In 2001. 2001. Um, okay. 2001. Uh, it probably took me a couple of years to realize like, okay, I like, I like doing this. I enjoy it. And, um, I also got into doing a lot of, uh, you know, personal development, personal growth. And, uh, you know, I, I just realized that if you want to be good at anything in life, you know, you have to commit to it and you have to be committed all the way to, um, you know, pursuing it. And, uh, you know, the, there's a common term in those like personality or, or personal development books, can I constant yeah. and never ending improvement. And I, I just realized like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to try and prove myself as a, a martial artist and a person every day, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, that's the one thing I love about martial arts is it is about development of uh, not just your body and your craft, but a development of, your, you know, your mind and your spirit, Yeah, you know? And, um, so, and you know, I, 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 I do want to, I do want to talk about that. I want to talk about that and I'm going to, I want to get into that here in just a minute. So hold that thought here for a second, because I'm going to, we're going to dive deep into that. When I watch you two, and I'm sure many of your um, people within your circle, like your students and, and your friends that you have formed over the years, it's part of your school. They can agree with me when I say this, you guys are a beautiful couple. And, and, and I mean, in all sense of the word, I mean, you guys, you guys, and people see that people can see that you guys love each other. You guys have a great relationship. Family is very important to you. How did you guys do it? When did this happen? When did you guys meet in high school or did you guys start this? I mean, when did, when did this all kind of come about? Honestly, uh, I took martial arts in uh, Franklin Park back in Illinois under uh, Master Duck Gun Kwan, and I was in it for seven years. I actually had a couple little gym locations that I was a head instructor. When I moved to Vegas, I put my older son into martial arts, and he was one of the instructors on the floor. And honestly, 
I sat in the parent area thinking, does anybody realize how talented he is? Uh, so I approach it as a business end of it uh, with him, obviously, as the business. So this is before I you started, got married? This is before you got married? Actually, it was before we got married. Okay. I started like writing numbers, two story in a notebook going, this is, this is a good business. Yeah. And believe it or not, I took his kickboxing class. Oh. And my son was in classes just so I could really try to get to him. Yeah. I kind of like set it up a little bit. <laughs> and um, I took his kickboxing class. And truthfully, Lou, I approached him. I'm like, you're so talented. We should open up a business together. Yeah. <laughs> he ignored me. <laughs> he didn't even answer me. He didn't even like lock eyes with me. He literally right. like mulled yeah. over me. And I'm thinking... Right. Oh my gosh. I went home. I kept taking this class and I, I was really a lot heavier when I took his class. So I, lost, I lost like 20 pounds taking his kickboxing class Yeah. and I brought it up again and he goes, Oh, okay. You know, why don't we go for dinner and let's talk. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And you guys now have a wonderful family. Your son is Max is part of your club. And I, I love how you guys, um, I love how you guys, uh, use your your school as a platform for your young students to become leaders i see that like that's really awesome is that is that like kind of a focal point of your school is that kind of like a basic tenet is to take some of your students and put them in leadership roles and have them be leaders and instruct yes um definitely um because you know the leadership skills whether they choose to stay in martial arts or whatever you know th- those things are going to help them in life you yeah. know and um you know, my job as an instructor is, like I said, uh, not just the physical skills, but trying to pass on the mental skills and and even on a small part, some of the spiritual skills of just, you know, like basic meditation, uh-huh. you know, just learn to be um, one with yourself and, and be happy with yourself and learning how to, you know, get inside of your own mind, yeah. um, you know, yeah. just clear out all the, you know, negative thoughts and things that we, we deal with on a, a daily basis. That's a great segue. Um, let's let's dive right into that right now. Let's just not hold anymore. Let's, 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 let's not skirt around. Let's get right into it. So I figured let's start this. Uh, let's start this portion of our of our discussion here with uh, going back to memory lane. Well, so uh, being part of your workout and being part of your gym has uh, has really engendered a habit of getting back to my physical fitness. That was a very important part of my life. But as I was coming in. And I, and I was taking your classes, I think you might agree there was this point and you, you probably don't remember it. I want to say it was only about a month after I, I joined your class and I started to get comfortable with you. Like I was still trying to figure out, I didn't know you very well. And you're not a very talkative person. You're very quiet, uh, which is, which is cool, which is cool. And, but, yeah. but man, you, you train. So as I was jumping our rope in our normal fashion, when we come in, it's kind of our normal routine. We jump rope for a few minutes and then we get into our kind of warm up routine. And I always position myself in the middle of the room and you don't know this, but I do that because I like to look at what you have on your whiteboard because on your whiteboard, you have like your workout of the day. And then off to the left, you always have this really nice, you know, you'll put some kind of a, a saying or a motivational one-liner that you might've either read in a book or something that you believe or whatever. And, and I like reading those. And then yeah. one day, one day I came in and one of the things that you had on there is you kind of had this. I can't remember how you put it, but it was kind of like the, um, the way of the, how oh, Jesus, like, uh, like the way of mastering your craft. And then you put a couple of things that kids needed to do. And one of them, you said, listen to your parents. Do you remember? Yeah, what I, I, I remember, remember 100%. Remember there's two times we, we had kind of a start discussion. Yeah. And, uh, the, the one was, it was, I think it was to obey what is right. And then uh-huh. we talked about your parents being uh, the person to give you the, um, obey. And then I think the other one was uh, one time when I put a quote by uh, Darwin, yes. we had a conversation yes. um, both of those times. The mental part of this is huge, is it not? I mean, the mental and the spiritual part of it. And, and so with that, can I just ask you a very simple, very dumb question? Is there kind of a fundamental belief system or spiritual belief system that's attached to martial arts that you're aware of? Well, I mean, it, it, coming, you know, most martial arts are coming from Eastern philosophy. So, there, you know, there's a lot of, of Buddha, Buddhism involved Hinduism. and stuff like that. Um, but um, most of it is, is just trying to um, start to figure out oneself, you know, and, and trying to uh, understand your own weaknesses and strengths and everything like that on the spiritual end. But 
Um, there's not really uh, like a set religion or anything like that connected to martial arts. Yeah. Okay. So with that, then what does master McCoy and McCoy martial arts, what are your core values? Like, what are the things that you feel if a kid were to come in, if I, you know, and, and if a parent were to bring their kids into your school, what can a parent expect their kid to learn from you? A great question. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> You know, I try, I try and keep it simple. Um, you know, a lot of the old uh, sayings, like, you know, just treat people the way you want to be treated. And, um, you know, like I, I went back to like the Kanayas, uh, you know, always trying to make yourself and improve yourself every day as an individual, whether uh, it, that's mentally, physically good, or, you know, emotionally trying to uh, make sure that you're always trying to improve yourself and just following that simple rule, you know, it, treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, if kind, you of the, treat kind people, of the golden rule, the golden rule, right? If you treat people the way you want to be treated or the way that you'd want, you know, your parents treated or your children treated, um, you're, you're probably doing pretty good in life, right? Is there a foundation of um, faith or is, is there a system that you personally ascribe to that, that, um, that where you garner these values and these understandings from that you project to your kids or, or not? A religion or yeah, just so, any, any spiritual foundation, whether and people, yes, I guess when I ask that question, some people will immediately say, yeah, I believe I, I belong. I'm a Catholic or I'm a Mormon or I'm Lutheran and I believe in Judeo Christian values and mm -hmm. and that. And some people might say, you know, I, I, um, I, I am more of a of a spiritualist and in, in terms of, uh, you know, I'm agnostic. I'm open to, you know, views of, of different uh, people and and discovering truth in a more of a free, instead of just religious dogma, I guess I'm curious as to what made you, what made you form your belief system? Is it something you learned as a child or is it something you learned from books? Like what's your foundation? So I think it's a combination of all those things, right? Um, my, my parents were, were good, good, great people. Um, you know, uh, I always refer to my grandma cause my grandma was one of the, the best people I've ever met and known. Um, she lived in the church, right? Uh, like until her last day. I mean, she has still awards in the church and Which everything church? like that. Um, uh, Methodist, Methodist, Methodist church. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my father, though, my father, you know, her son, he uh, is not a real religious person. I mean, I, I've heard him say before that, you know, he's atheist, yeah. um, you know, and then, uh, but I, I I still believe he does believe in some kind of, and I've never had the conversation with him that he does believe in some kind of spiritual stuff, uh -huh. um, which is weird that I, I seen my grandma so strong with it and my dad not have it. Um, and then my mom's side of the family, kind of the same thing. My, my grandma, grandpa, they were real religious and uh, my grandma's still religious. My grandfather was religious uh, on uh I like to say, you know, in the eyes of people, yeah. but you know, some of his actions, I would say weren't, yeah. um, just seeing those things, you know, kind of formed the, the religious side of me that I, I kind of have is, um, I have a hard time believing in like what people call, you know, nowadays religion. Um, when yeah. I look at it, when I see, um, the way it's ran, it's, you know, it's ran like a business, you know, and I think in general, religion is good for a lot of people because it helps connect you to, um, a group and it helps, um, you know, they're most of the time they're spreading positivity, which is a good thing. And I, I do believe, like I said, in a spiritual, you know, we've kind of talked this on a deeper level. I believe in a spiritual substance or being or something like that. But when you put it in a book and you put a name on it and you start um, trying to teach it and tell people how it is and, and it's supposed to be this way and that way and this way is wrong and that way is wrong. Um, it's hard for me to get behind that, you yeah. know, so um, I kind of just have my own belief system with that. And, you know, they change all the time. You know, like I said, I'm always trying to put um, positive books in my in my brain, you know, positive podcasts, different things like that to give me a different perspective on the world. And plus, you know, your, your own um, things you deal with in life, you know, your own um, lived experience. Exactly. You know, when you deal with those things, they they continually change, you know, the way you feel and think about the world. Now, um, Susie, has this, um, I mean, because as I, as I listen to Master McCoy talk about, um, you know, some of the foundational things that he grew up with that kind of uh, formed his, uh, I guess, his philosophical view of the, his worldview um, about religion and spirituality and things like that. What about you? Did you have a foundation of religion? Um, is religion important in your family at all? Or 
hundred percent. And hundred percent. Um, I was raised Catholic. I was raised in this Western suburb of Chicago called Melrose Park. Mm -hmm. Everybody was Italian. Everybody was Catholic. I truthfully know no different. I mean, unless you're in surgery, you're in church on Sunday. That's the way I was raised. My parents who are 79 and 80 are still a hundred percent at church. They go to their Bible study. They go to their rosary. My dad's Knights of Columbus. Our church back home has uh, plaques of, my family hanging out of walls because of my grandparents. Uh, I was raised completely different. And then I, I met Wade mm -hmm. and I'm like, what religion is your family? I, right. I, and it sounds so stupid and naive. <laughs> I believe there was really no other. Not yeah. saying I never heard of different religions, of course. Yeah. And he definitely taught me that there was more to life than just a square, but different as far as church and stuff. I mean, I, I know I shared this with you. I mean, before COVID, I was in church five days a week. Yeah. It wasn't because I think I'm a better person. It's just because it makes me feel better being there. Yeah. I go through, it's almost like my meditation spot. I go through my, uh, how to make myself better, how to calm my mouth down, you know, being, I'm, I'm really a strong individual. Yeah. Uh, I was raised in a fantastic family. Yeah. So I just use religion as almost where it just it calms me down, it bases me. So religious okay. is religion is very important for you, you know, in our house. I mean, okay. we do pray at night. Do we pray every night? No. Do I pray every night? Yes. You know, I but we so do you guys, pray. You guys pray together as a couple or individually? Um, no, we pray separately, separately. Okay. And so this might sound like a stupid question, but um, I'm very fascinated with these things. Um, as you pray, because I can, I can, I get the sense that uh, Wade, you're, you're, is, is it safe to say that you're more agnostic, like your position right now? You're not right. You know, are you agnostic at this point, or? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I don't quite know what agnostic means. Okay, that's no, okay. No, um, space. Yeah, I know it because that's all I talk about every day, right? <laughs> so, an agnostic is basically a person who is skeptical at this point about the existence of a God, but is not entirely opposed to the, to the idea that there could be one provided that there's more evidence available in the future. Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, I, I believe in some form of spirituality, spirituality yeah. being, being, yeah. um, so I, I believe that there's something, there's something out there that, that helps, um, you know, whether if it's an energy or a, a entity or whatever you want to call it yeah um i do believe in that but like i said i i don't i i mean i don't know if the catholics are right or the yeah. muslims are right, right. or if both so when you pray right. with, with maybe maybe said, our native maybe maybe our native americans were right, right. with the you yeah. know the sun god and the sure. earth god and something like that and there's a, a spirit world or something like that mm -hmm. you know so um i just don't think i have the answers right and um and i don't think a lot of people who are out there are saying they have the answers, have the answers either. Gotcha. So when you pray, um, mm -hmm. who do you pray to? Um, so I guess I pray to, you know, the universe, you know, just um, putting it out there kind of like almost uh, as a positive thought, you know? Mm -hmm. So the so, way, the way people look at the, you know, the secret where they, they believe you can, you know, form your, your destiny by thinking positive thoughts or things like that. I kind of, you know, put those, those uh, thoughts out there that way. I'm, I'm very interested in these little details. So if I'm asking something that's really weird, you don't have to answer this question, but I'm interested. So if one claims to pray, but they don't know really who they're praying to, I'm really interested in what kind of words you utter when you pray. So like, for instance, when I used to pray, so I used to be, I used to be Mormon or LDS, Latter-day Saint. And we used to pray to the Christian God. Okay. And we used to believe in God, the father, the son, and the Holy ghost. And we believed in Jesus Christ. So that's, that's when I used to be a religious person. And so when I would pray, whether it was vocally or in my brain, in my mind, silently, this is how a LDS prayer typically sounds like. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given, given us in our lives. We appreciate your, your work. We, we recognize your, your, the, the, your hand in the details of our lives. As we go out through this day, Please bless us so that we can be safe. Please bless the McCoy family so that they can uh, do good and, 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 and see success in their business. Please bless my son as he goes out to wrestling so that he could 
have the strength necessary to be able to complete and, uh, you know, and perform well without injury. Um, please bless my wife as he, as she's going through her arthritis and her pains and help soften her pains and things like that. And then I would say, we're grateful. We're grateful for everything that thou has given us and recognize that it comes from thee in Jesus name. Amen. So that would be a typical prayer that I would say, but you can see, I think you can see very quickly there that as I uttered those words, I actually knew exactly who I was praying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I said him by name. Right. And then I also, I also did what I gave all devotion and all credit to him. And I said, we know that everything good comes from thee. Right. And so, um, as I, and I can see that uh, Susie felt very emotional as I, as I uttered, the, uttered those words. And, and let me tell you something, there was a point in my life for a very long time that I believed those words. With that being said, do you have a prayer that sounds something like that? Or would you be able to kind of give me an example of kind of the things you would say in a prayer? So for a long time, I used Lord, you know, um, but now it would be uh, just more like, you know, saying, you know, I'm, I'm thankful, giving thanks to, you know, just being thankful for uh, what I have, you know, and um, it's almost like, really asking it's almost like offering for. gratitude and throwing that gratitude out giving to the gratitude universe. gratitude to the universe. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful there. for these right. things. I'm grateful for this. You know, I'm grateful that my, you know, I'm healthy. I'm grateful, you know, for my family. I'm grateful for my business, you know. And just that would be more of my prayer nowadays. And I, I never, I've never prayed out loud. So I've never said words. It's always yeah. just been in my own head. Do you feel like it's important for you to express your gratitude so as to recognize that maybe there's greater things at work here involved behind your success and that it's just not you? Are you fearful that if you don't do that, that maybe some of these things that you enjoy would be ripped away from you? Is that why you do it or? Mm, that's another great question. Uh, I don't, I don't think I, I have that thought. Um, I think it would be more take away from the person I am if uh, I didn't put that gratefulness out there. That's you beautiful. know, it, it, it would be, it would be part of like, I, I talked about, you know, my own uh, growth in spirology. Uh, yeah. If I didn't, if I didn't put that thankfulness out there, I feel like it would uh, take away from take away myself. From you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Take away from my own thoughts, my own positivity, um, you know, because I think showing gratitude for what you have is, is important, you know, yeah. and it's a it's a it's a life skill. And it's you know? and it sounds and it sounds like also that it's um, um, that showing gratitude um, can also foster humility, which is an important asset. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. OK. All right. Cool. I appreciate that. That's awesome. So, Susie. <laughs> Did uh, yes, when you sat and listened to the prayer that I uttered, it was kind of an example prayer. Um, I saw that you got a little emotional. Why? Honestly, I started to cry because the question, it, and you do not have to answer this. That's the okay. question that came to my head is why you feel different now. So me believing in God so much and I have no, uh, pause on anything in part of my life that makes me mad at God or anything like that. But when I heard you pray, it makes me cry because prayer is so important to me. And it just made me say what happened that is that, that I sensed a difference in, you know, you said you used to pray and, and you didn't. So I kind of got sad thinking what made you or what makes you not pray now. But that's uh, personal. So no, I don't, no, that's sorry. Okay. No, don't, don't apologize. We're having a great conversation and all of our listeners get to be a fly on a wall. And this is this, this conversation that we're having is a real authentic conversation again, that needs to be had more often. Yes, sir. And, and, and so I'm happy to answer that question. Okay. Um, there, I reached a point in my life where I started to see how I just started to see how religion um, causes harm on other people. Um, I mean, here's the bottom line. We believe much of what we believe because others have told us to. I mean, especially in our adolescent years um, where we are not given much freedom to think for ourselves. Once I became an adult and uh, was free to explore ideas for myself, I began to see how religious dogmatism can be harmful especially if we take the word of God literally. So let me be frank. 
There are only two approaches one can take when considering faith-based religion as their basis of morality. You can either be a moderate or a fundamentalist, but you can't be both. A moderate believer, which represents the large majority, will not take their canon of scriptures literally, or even seriously for that matter. They'll just cherry-pick the good parts that will confirm their bias and ignore the bad parts that don't necessarily align with modern culture. Worse off, they won't even take the time to read and understand their scriptures of choice all the way through. They'll just operate on blind faith and justify their beliefs because it makes them feel good or because it gives them hope. A good example of moderate belief is how believers will ignore the parts of the Bible that condemn the homosexual behavior of their sons or daughters or uncle or any other person they care about because it will drive a wedge in their relationship if they believe the Bible literally. Right? I mean, so so what's a fundamentalist then? Well, a fundamentalist, uh, the easiest example to point out here is Islam. Because most adherents of the Islamic faith, whether fundamental or moderate, consider the Quran to be the literal and inerrant word of God, the one true God. I mean, this is undisputable. There is just too much evidence out there to consider the contrary. We need not look any further than the tragedy of 9-11 to see how fundamental belief in Holy Writ can persuade a people to cause tremendous harm on innocent men, women, and children to defend their beliefs and bring honor to their God. We must not overlook the fact that a significant percentage of the world's Muslims believe that the men who brought down the World Trade Center are now seated at the right hand of God. I mean, that's really what they believe. But um, but let's not single out the Muslims. I mean, there's plenty of fundamentalism to go around. I mean, we should not ignore the fact that most Christians today accept the idea that gay and lesbians are perverted in nature. I mean, take Leviticus 20.13, for example. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. I mean, and that's, and that's just one anecdote. I mean, you guys know the Bible is very long. I mean, it's huge, right? And so there's many, many examples of this. But, uh, I mean, here's, here's another one to follow up on that. I mean, in Genesis, homosexuality is worse than a woman being raped. I mean, one of God's trusty servants, uh, Lot, um, which is uh, Abraham's nephew, uh, gave his virgin daughter up to a mob of men to spare his male guest the shame of being sodomized. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So the key word in these verses uh, is the word no. And, and I want to make sure that uh, you and our listeners um, understand what the word no means in the biblical context. Let me ask you, do you know what that word no means in the Bible? Don't. No, sir. That means so that they can have sex with him. That's, so that's not, that's not something that I'm making up. That is something that anybody can pick up their Bible and they can look up their glossary or their, their, their Bible dictionary or whatever. And they look that up because you have to know what that means. What does that mean? I mean, it's a weird way of putting it. Hey, bring that man out so that we can know him. What does that mean? Right? Some people might think, oh, so we can get better, you know, get to know him better. <laughs> well, in this sense, it's, it's talking about we want to have sex with him. I mean, and that's not even the bad parts of this verse. I mean, the, 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 the bad part of this verse happens at the very end, you know, in, um, in, verse, uh, in verse 8, where Lot gives up his two daughters, his virgin daughters, to this mob of men outside in exchange for, the, for them sparing um, whatever they want to do with, their, with his male guests. There's some very gory stories in the Bible that, um, yes, that, that promotes racism, that promotes genocide, that promotes rape, that promotes incest that promotes all kinds of things that is just ugly and gory. And again, for a person to not understand that, you must be a moderate. 
because a moderate would not know the full extent of the Bible. Because a moderate is only going to do what? They're just going to cherry pick on the good things. They're discounting some very basic truths that's said in their Bible. Yes, 100%. I never even, I never even thought of that. That makes me actually mad at myself for not even, because, you know, I went to a Catholic grammar school, high school, and college. And, you know, we read the Bible all the time. And ever, now, now you say that, obviously, I cherry picked half of the Bible. So only half like I agreed with in half. So I never even realized thinking yeah, I mean, that most people do the same thing. So you can take comfort uh, that you're not alone and that you are in the majority. Um, Cause it's the easier route to take. It's, it's much easier to just, uh, you know, um, go off of faith and, and not study and not read and not do any cross referencing. I mean, all that just takes a lot of time, right? It takes a lot of time. And, and some people are just not willing to spend the time to dive into those things. You know, it's much funner to go and watch a movie. It's much funner to go on a hike. It's much funner to go, you know, watch your, 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 your kids' soccer games and, 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 and competition and all that stuff. So I totally get it. Anyway, sorry, I said too much. Does that answer your question? Oh, answers it 100%. I mean, for sure. That's why I said when I met him, it was like all of my ancestors in front of me that passed away, everything that they taught me, and I meet this one man that teaches me all of that put together plus outside of the box as well. Well, and you should you should feel fortunate uh, that you and uh, Master McCoy met at the time that you did um, and was able to, um, expand your, your thoughts and, and explore ideas of how to live a good life, um, outside of religion. Cause otherwise had you, had you kept on with your, your servile prejudices based on your religious faith, um, you might've felt compelled to leave, um, your husband, um, over scriptures such as the one found in Luke, um, Luke chapter 14, verse 26. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned, and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. I'm happy to expound just briefly on why this was important to me, but can I ask you, what comes to mind when you hear that scripture? What do you think that means? It means like he's saying it's okay to have hate. I mean, it sounds messed up to me. Like yeah, if I mean, you're saying, like he's saying it's okay to have hate towards the people in your life like that. Yeah. It, it's, I don't, I, the only word I could come up with is, it's like heart crushing, <laughs> disappointing. Yeah. The way that you, the way that you kind of interpreted that, Susie, that could match literally millions of what other people just like you would interpret it as well. Okay. But let me tell you what the actual moral of that, that passage is. So what the Bible is trying to teach here and what Jesus is trying to teach here, he is basically saying, if anyone claims to love his own wife or his mother or his father or his son or his daughter more than me, more than me, now, he didn't say that literally in there, but that's the message he's trying to say. He's trying to say, you cannot be my true disciple if you love Master McCoy more than, more than me. I don't want to dwell on this whole thing with that because I want to talk about other happier things with you guys on this podcast. But does that kind of, you know, that's, that's what he's that's trying what to he's... And so in my mind, I'm like, no way. There is no way. It, it, does, it does make sense because, you know, my mom has said throughout my whole life, it's God, and then it's my father, mm-hmm. and then it's her children, and then it's herself. Right. And you know how many parents have actually insisted that their sons or daughters leave their husbands or their wives because their husbands or wives are not of God? They're not religious. That mm-hmm. happens all the time. Yeah, yeah I've and, heard and, that. And guess what? It's because of what? It's because of that scripture. Because, mm-hmm. again, to be a believer of this thing, you're either going to be a moderate and say, no, I'm not going to believe that. I'm just going to believe in the other things like turn, turn the other cheek. That's a moderate. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to be a fundamentalist, which is you're going to read this scripture and say, yeah, man, if my husband doesn't believe in God, I got to leave him because he's dangerous. Because there's nobody more important in my life than Jesus. And so if my husband doesn't believe in Jesus, we can't work. We're not going to be able to work out. That's what that's saying. Anyway, um, Susie, 
and Wade, Master McCoy. Thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day uh, to spend with us. You guys are an awesome example to those around you. And um, uh, we are definitely, um, our life has improved and we are better for having listened to your story. So we really appreciate it. Um, for the final few minutes that we have, I'll go ahead and extend to you the same opportunity that I extend to every one of my guests on Think on Your Faith. And that is, if your voice can penetrate every household in the world with this podcast, what would your message be? First, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, taking your time out and doing the show. And uh, we love uh, having you part of our life just as well and are, are fortunate that we met you. And uh, my my, my uh, voice out there to everybody would um, just be to, you know, listen to the, some of the things I said in this podcast, because I think it'll change your life, you know, try and, uh, you know, make it where you're trying to uh, be that person who's always trying to make themselves a better person every day um, through, you know, fitness and through your mind and uh, through your spirit and, uh, you know, live that golden rule and uh, just treat people like uh, you would want to be treated. Yeah. And if there are listeners here within the local Las Vegas area, how do they get in touch with you if they want to apply and be part of your gym? Um, so we're, uh, it's called results, martial arts. Uh, you can just hit us a uh, Google search or uh, give us a call 702-837-8400. Wonderful. Beautiful. Um, thank you so much. And I wish you all the best and we'll see you guys soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks thank you a lot. so much. Have a Thanks good for having us. All right. Go Steelers. You and your family. Thank you, sir. We thank you for joining us on this week's edition of think on your faith. Hey, free thinkers, don't forget to like and follow us on our Facebook page. It is called Think on Your Faith. We'd love to have you join our family. And if you are interested in becoming a guest on this show, we'd love to hear from you. Please inbox us and tell us a little bit about your story. And we'll reach out to you and and see if we can't have you share your story and your journey with us so that we can all raise our consciousness together. You can also email us at thinkonyourfaith at gmail.com. We look forward to chatting with you.